Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for coming to my this talk today. Uh, my name is Ayumi Watanabe. I'm working for Hitachi Solutions Japan. Uh, I am living in Japan and I am a SBOM specialist uh, of Japan. Uh, so, my uh, the title of my talk today is What's Happening in Japan? The, correct, the Current Situation of Japan. Uh, as you know, SBOM is huge right now in the world. And in Japan, of course it is. Maybe you know well about the SBOM situation in your country, or maybe you know well about the situation in maybe the United States or the European Union. But uh, how about Japan? Uh, we are not hiding anything, it's not a secret, but I think uh, it is very difficult to find uh, what's going on in Japan. So that is the reason that I planned this talk. Uh, today I will talk about the SBOM situation in Japan uh, and our issues and governmental guidelines which was uh, updated recently. Uh, so, uh, and I have very limited time today, so uh, please forgive me in advance that uh, I couldn't, I cannot cover everything deeply. So, first of all, uh, let me speak a little bit about myself. My name is Ayumi again, and uh, a senior OS specialist at Hitachi Solutions. It's a Japanese company. And I am also an evangelist of the Linux Foundation Japan and a planning leader of Open Chain Japan. Uh, I have my LinkedIn account here, so uh, please feel free to send a message to me. Uh, I am always happy to connect with the open source and as well people. So, uh, before talking about uh, Japan, uh, let's see the SBOM situation in the world, I mean, uh, outside of Japan. Uh, now, we have two big national and regional SBOM uh, standards. One is an executive order 14028 of the United States. The other is a Cyber Resilience Act of the European Union. In relation to this, now we have many industrial standards and guidelines. For example, for medical device, we have the IMDLF and FDA standards. For automotive, indus for, uh, automotive industry, uh, we have many regulations such as uh, WP29, uh, UNR155 or 156, and ISO2134, no, so and uh, NHTSA guideline. And uh, for payment card industry, uh, now PCIDSS version 4 requests you to make a SBOM. In this situation, how Japanese companies are getting along with SBOM? Uh, I have one, I have a result of one survey. It is about uh, Japanese companies, uh, which was done by Peter Wilsey and Synopsis. Thank you very much. Uh, it is about the SBOM situation of Japanese companies as of uh, May. No, much of this year. So according to this survey, uh, out of 110 companies who export digital devices to the EU market, only 27% of companies have done to comply with the EU CLA. Even if we still have about two or three years left, uh, maybe the percentage is not so high as we expected. And uh, another fact from the survey, uh, we found that Japan, uh, there are big gaps between ideal and current situation uh, in Japanese companies. <clears throat> For example, uh, Japanese companies expect the value that 
that s can optimize threat analysis and risk assessment of products, but only 58% of them experienced the, the benefit. So the gap is 42%. Uh, another gap is managing supply chain risks. The gap of ideal and current is 20%. All people agreed the SBOM capability as an evidence of product safety, but 20% uh, of people are not satisfied with the capability of optimizing vulnerability management. Another fact from the survey, uh, they found that Japanese companies have some difficulties in, for example, choosing one SBOM format or in updating as form following product updates, or in collecting necessary information accurately, and in matching vulnerability information with components. From this survey, we can see the fact that Japanese companies are not able to take full advantage of as form's capability. So, uh, what our government is, is doing for the situation? Now we have a statement uh, which was published by uh, National Center of Incident Readiness and Strategy for Cybersecurity. We call them NISC uh, of Japan. Uh, the survey, the, no statement. The sub statement is called Cybersecurity 2024. In this statement, uh, they have three priority uh, measures. Out of three measures, the second measure is improving economic and social vitality and sustainable development. And in this section, uh, they, they are stating about increase the uh, use of SBOM for reinforcing cybersecurity for IoT devices and uh, software products based on secure by design and secure by default principles. That's cool. And uh, this is a more uh, practical details of the measures that I explained in the previous slide. So for ensuring supply chain reliability, they do activities to promote SBOM and reinforce security measures for IoT products. And to do that, a Japanese government formulated a guide of introduction of software uh, bill of materials for software management. This is Japanese SBOM guideline. By the way, have you ever read the Japanese SBOM guideline? No? <laughs> Maybe no. Uh, that's it. Uh, the first version of this guideline was released in July 28 of last year. It covers everything about SBOM. Uh, as a matter of fact, I am a member of a reviewing team of this guideline, so uh, I personally recommend you read <laughs> this guideline. It's worth to do so. They have an uh, English translated version in the link of this uh, QR code. This is the details of the guideline. Uh, as a background, uh, to uh, make this guide, Japanese METI did proof of concept project with companies from many industries, such as healthcare, automotive, and software. And they evaluated the cost and effects of implementing SBOM in companies. And uh, the purpose of this guideline is solving various issues of software, uh, no, sorry, uh, issues of SBOM for Japanese companies. In this guideline, we define uh, SBOM introduction process, process uh, divided with three phrases. Phrase one, environment and system development phase. 
it is about selecting an SBOM tool and learning about the SBOM tool. It's all about the SBOM tool. And uh, phase two is SBOM production and the sharing process. Uh, it is about using the SBOM tool to analyze the components and uh, producing an SBOM. And uh, considering sharing the SBOM with users and suppliers in your supply chain. Phase three is SBOM use and management phase. It is about implementing vulnerability management, license management, and other operations based on the produced SBOM. Again, this guideline is very practical and good reference for the entry level company. Uh, this is a Japanese guideline, but it, is, it can be used in everywhere, of course and it is useful for every company in the world. And just uh, two weeks ago, uh, Japanese METI released the SBOM guideline version two. They added about 60 pages from version one. And uh, for that, they did public comments for about one month and then they got more than 100 comments from the public. Uh, from this, we can see how Japanese people are interested in SBOM right now. This guideline is very new, so uh, we don't have an English version for now. So uh, today I can tell you the contents uh, that added as version two. So added contents for version two is uh, that, that uh, consists of three points. That uh, first one is uh, they have detailed vulnerability management process with SBOM. It is about, for example, uh, how to gather vulnerability information and uh, how to uh, how to do triage. Uh, with, for example, CVSS score, uh, SSVC, EPSS, and the KV catalog or something, and uh, how to report the vulnerability information in your company. Very practical steps for uh, managing uh, security. The second one is uh, the framework for considering the appropriate scope of S1. Uh, scope means, for example, how deep we follow uh, the transitive dependencies or uh, which, uh, which uh, how do I say, uh, uh, SPDX or SecondDX or uh, how to report their SBOM or who manage uh, their SBOM. Uh, it can be used for, for example, uh, ordering phase to the third party uh, companies, like uh, we need this kind of SBOM. It can describe the way this uh, framework and it can be used for uh, contract between companies. And it can be also used for industrial standards of uh, everything. And the third one is models uh, to define things that should be uh, stipulated in the contract regarding SBOM between supplier and consumer of software. So it covers, for example, who, who make SBOM or who covers the cost and uh, how people uh, report their vulnerabilities and IPs and it covers everything about contract. And it is also so useful. Uh, I would say this is one of the most practical SOM guideline in the world. You should check it. Uh, today I have very limited time for this talk, so I couldn't cover everything that I wanted to talk to you. And I always talk too much, sorry. So uh, I left many things that I... Uh, 
I wanted to tell you. So I submitted my CFP again to the next Open Source Summit and it uh, was accepted. So uh, do you know where the next Open Source Summit is? <laughs> it's in Japan. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, yes, the next Open Source Summit uh, will be held in Japan. So it is the best timing to talk the full version of my talk, maybe. So uh, see you in Tokyo in October. And please look forward to uh, my full version of talk about what's going on in Japan at Open Source Summit Japan 2024. And uh, uh, I, ha I don't have enough time for a question, so I will be around uh, here uh, through this event. So please feel, me, uh, please feel, feel free to catch me uh, for further discussion and for your question. Thank you very much.